The first one is to have the legal institutional framework that allows workers to form independent, democratic, strong unions. So that is number one. The other is, you know, workers around the world are facing threats of violence and harassment. They get fired every day for trying to organize a union. The key elements to successful social partnership is that government can hear from the diverse partners throughout the economy and can incorporate those voices into policy making. I think left without a worker voice at the table, too often workers are just going to be left behind and then we will see social unrest, we will see inequality, we will see poverty, we will see much more dramatic downsides of the global economic crisis if workers aren't able to engage in the constructive dialogue. As technological change happens, are workers at the table helping to shape the regulations, the labor market provisions that might protect workers' privacy, might protect their safety and health on the job, their ability to organize a union, so as um, technology changes, what we shouldn't lose sight of is how important it is for workers to be able to exercise their rights. I think the green transition is an excellent example of where we especially need social dialogue because this isn't about governments and it isn't about business and it isn't just about labor, but all of those parties um, have a stake in making sure that we are doing everything in our power to address climate change. But we have to do so in a way that takes account of the transition and the very uh, uneven impact of that transition on the most vulnerable population. I think these kinds of multilateral, multi-stakeholder convenings are especially important right now. The world is so fractured and politics are so difficult, but we know that when workers and the private sector as, as social partners can be part of the policy-making dialogue, that it both strengthens democracy in the United States, around the world, and also strengthens the policy outcomes.